Hey everyone, I hope that you're doing well. Um, I feel like I've been gone for a really long time and quite frankly a lot of that is because where I finally had some events occur um, they happened so quickly that I was a little bit overwhelmed and I tend to film on the weekends because I work during the week and then at night I'm just tired. <laughs> um, and if you're watching this then you probably already know that Friday, last week, a week from today, um, is when I found out about Christy's husband Royce. And that, <laughs> that day I was on an extreme high from good news and so I hit rock bottom that day with that bad news and um, I think I was really surprised at how I took that. Well maybe not surprised because it seems like the entire community was affected by it. As I've said in a previous video she was probably the second person to ever welcome me to the community. And not only that, but I didn't care about viewership, but um, early on when I had only made a few videos, Christy would share my video with her followers. And I know that some people came to my channel from her, so I'll be forever grateful for her. And I will be thinking of Christy, you, Christy, I hope you're watching. I cry a lot now, <laughs> um, for good and bad reasons, I'm just, just the emotional girl now. Alright, so I'm going to try to do things in chronological order to keep myself organized. <laughs> I guess that's part of my personality. So, um, as, as some of you may know, the last really big event was that I had found out that my AMH was incredibly, incredibly low. It was 0 0.36. A normal woman should be up, up to 9. And they really, really don't like anything less than 1. So a 0 0.36, it just devastated me. Um, it was a temporary devastation because thanks to this community, um, I know that there are other options and that your story is never over. Um, but I was prepared to um, use a donor egg if necessary. And I wouldn't have been okay with that if it wasn't for this community. Um, here I go again. So, um, I just had to wait and we went on vacation to Florida and that was wonderful timing. Um, it was so nice to just do nothing. <laughs> so basically that vacation was like, we woke up whenever we wanted, a couple of the days the girls there were three couples. We would go on the beach and do yoga in the morning, morning-ish, <laughs> and then we would have breakfast around 10, we would cook for each other, you know, take turns, and then just, you know, <laughs> go back to the beach, you know, and we drank and we swam and we played beach volleyball. Um, it was the off season, so it was sort of like we had the entire resort to ourselves. It was my first time seeing the ocean. I will probably make a video compilation later just about our trip to Florida. Um, I'm gonna have a couple weeks of like nothing happening in my life so I'm gonna try to make several small videos and release them you know every few days. All I knew is that I needed to wait. We had orientation on October 9th and then we would have the SHG on October 14th. Then what happened was I found out that I am a carrier for cystic fibrosis. So that prompted an appointment with a genetic counselor and my husband and I both had to attend. So our nurses are fantastic. I cannot praise our clinic enough. Um, it is a clinic in St. Louis. If you have any questions about it, 
you know, I can address them on a personal basis if you would like. Um, but they were nice enough to schedule the genetic counseling directly following the um, orientation. We do live 45 minutes away from the clinic and my husband works in Illinois. I at least work in St. Louis, um, but he has to take off work every time we need to go over there. So orientation, I didn't know what to expect. I had no idea why the heck it would be four hours long. Um, and it turns out it's, it's created for the people who don't really know what's about to happen. Um, you know, I am blessed to have this community. I pretty much knew everything they talked about. So all of the knowledge that we accumulate by watching each other's stories is what they presented in a slideshow format. And it was um, three parts. So the first part was presented by an IVF nurse. And there was actually a second nurse in the room to answer questions. She, short, she sort of walked around asking questions as they came up so that the other nurse could continue with the slideshow presentation. Um, one part that I was really interested in was the details of the different protocols. Most women are given the long agonist protocol. I, with my low AMH, was given the antagonist protocol. And I don't know what that means. I still don't know what that means because what happened is, since most women were interested in hearing about the long agonist, um, the nurse couldn't get through that slide. They probably spent 20 minutes on that protocol. There were so many questions, questions that weren't even related to the injections or how a protocol um, is differentiated from another. They, they kind of started to upset me. Um, so they took so much time asking silly questions that when they got to the antagonist protocol, the nurse spent literally less than 30 seconds on it. So that was a little frustrating. Uh, the other thing that I was most interested in seeing was injections. And the same IVF nurse um, at the end of everything presented the injections. There were sample packs of two different types of pens, you know, like the Follistem pen, which I've seen a million times. And there was a very small um, syringe and vial that we could practice with, but there was nothing to inject. So there was no, um, you know, plastic, fake, <laughs> stomach or or buttocks that we could inject so there really wasn't much practice involved except how to safely handle the needles themselves <clears throat> um i could visibly see that at that point my husband i could tell things were starting to really pile up on him um i think for both of us orientation was the day that shit got real <laughs> I, there's no other way to put it. So emotions have been very, very high ever since orientation. Um, I got a little bit off track because I wanted to sort of outline how the presentation was presented. Um, so the first part was the IVF nurse teaching us about just generic information. And then an embryologist from the lab came in to do her presentation and that was very interesting. I actually learned a lot of things I don't know, you know. Um, that air quality is of utmost importance to them. They have HEPA filters all over. Um, that's my fur baby. He's very protective of the house and he hates sirens. Um, I learned just a little bit more of the details of what they do in the lab. I don't remember them off of the top of my head, but that's okay because look at this. Um, to go along with the slideshow presentation, we were given this. Hope you can see that. This is a binder of everything they talked about and up front is a sheet of contacts and patient fact sheets an injection, not injection how-tos, but um, 
It's more like medication details. And this followed along exactly with the slideshow presentation. So when the embryologist left, um, then it was time for one of the IVF doctors to give a presentation. And she talked a little bit, very briefly, it was the shortest um, part of the presentation, but she talked very, very briefly about what they do, and then she jumped into asking us if we would like to participate in a study. And I'm sure some of you have heard about the um, scratching of the endometrial lining that they can do. They're finding that it aids in the embryo or blastocyst implanting. Um, you will not be compensated and there will be no discount on your treatment if you choose to be in the study. And furthermore, it's a blind study. So if we choose to participate, we are volunteering for the scratch, but they might not actually do it for us. But either way, they will go in with a catheter and sort of pretend to do it. So we as the patient, we don't actually know if a scratch test was performed or not. But from what I've heard about it, it can't hurt anything. And if the only thing holding back the use of this procedure is the lack of a study, then I think I'm gonna participate. I would love to help them out. I love our clinic. And um, as I've said in previous videos, the procedures for IVF are improving all the time. You know, the procedure itself is relatively new. It's 30-ish um, years old. So I would love to help with the advancement of study. Um, okay, so when we left, we had to leave like in the middle of injection training to go to the genetic counseling appointment. And that was pretty quick. We just had to go over um, all of our family tree. <laughs> and I didn't know... I'm sure everyone's family has quirks. Um, but when someone draws your quirks on paper, things become really evident. So, um... You know, there were such details as, well, you know, these people already had kids before they got married. So then we had to talk about branches before marriage and after marriage. Um, whether or not people were divorced, if they had children from two different spouses, we had to talk about all of the children, assuming that they were directly related to us. So um, there were some obvious trends. There is a lot of cancer on my mom's side, but none of it is tied to genetic causes, and there's no evidence that it could be passed on genetically. Um, and then on my dad's side, which actually did concern the genetic counselor, um, bipolar disorder um, shows up in one branch. So, but other than that, there was nothing that the genetic counselor was very concerned with. Um, she wanted to run the same panel um, on my husband that they ran on me, um, except that she recommended an expanded panel. Um, the the smallish panel identified um, that I have the most common genetic mutation for cystic fibrosis, and. Statistics vary, but she said basically like one in 29 Caucasians are a carrier. So it's not surprising to her. What are you doing? We have a little sock stealer. I see you. <laughs> He's at the hamper right now. The expanded panel and the panel that they ran on me are... And he got a sock. Okay, um, the panel that was run on me and the extended panel are comparable in price. And apparently the lab that the genetic counselor would utilize is different than the RE. The lab the genetic counselor likes gets results um, fairly quickly and the out-of-pocket cost to the patient is never more than $25. So that was uh, an easy one for us. Of course, we're going to do that. 
Um, there was another test we could have opted for, which is a full genetic sequencing. And I can only imagine. I think it was a couple thousand dollars. And the funny thing is, to do that genetic sequencing, it's a couple thousand dollars. It would find every single genetic mutation that my husband has, but it would not identify them. So what that meant to me was we would pay a couple thousand to identify all of the gen genetic mutations and then we would have to do more testing. So we said no thanks, you know. Um, my Ari's recommendation after, well, she wants to hear what his panel results are and if he is a carrier then we will decide whether or not we're going to do PGD. My genetic mutation was the most popular and or most common and my husband if if his genetic mutation was a specific type the two combined they don't actually cause cystic fibrosis symptoms as you normally would think of them they they together only cause male factor infertility that was really interesting to learn. So my poor husband, upon finding out about his low sperm count and low motility, I know the first thing he thought is why? Why is this happening? What happened? Was it an injury? Because he did have a, a couple different um, injuries, as most boys do by the time they're an adult. And there were some hernia surgeries and concerns and he's always wondered why and it would be really interesting if both of his parents were a carrier for cystic fibrosis and they one or, one or the other had that rare um, mutation. It's very interesting that the combination of the most common with this one rare causes male factor infertility. So I'm, I'm going to cut it off there so that I don't talk for too long. It's wonderful to be able to have things to tell you. Um, and you can look forward to more videos from me. I will probably be wearing the same outfit because I think I'm just going to blitz through everything and get all caught up. Um, I love all of you. I love this community. Please, in your, if it's in your heart, give to Christy. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.